On today's episode of Watch Chair, we work on the $1,100 cheap, broken Honda Civic Hybrid. What is going on guys? I am Watch Chair and today we are here with this Honda Civic Hybrid. It's been raining nonstop, but we got it inside. And now we're going to pull the battery out and get all these cells out that were in the trunk and uh, just start pulling things out of the car and see what happens. We gotta uh, tear this battery apart, get a meter on uh, some of the cells, figure out which ones are bad. Honestly, from what I've seen, there should be holes in the cells that are bad. They fail so catastrophically in these. Really? Yeah, like it'll, it'll have like burn marks outside and stuff. And uh, like visually, you should be able to tell which ones are bad. So we're gonna find out if that's true. We're gonna get the big IMA battery out of the car and go from there. So it's behind the seat. Let's start clearing out the car. There's the giant guard that they'd already disassembled. You can see all the screws for that thing are sitting there. Uh, which way you wanna send this? Go my way since you only got one hand. Okay, there you go. And there is the battery. So do the magic thing, turn off the battery. Boom. Oh, I thought you meant it was a hybrid because it was cheap and broken. <laughs> it's two, two things two at things. the same time. Oh. Uh. Lick your finger. Yeah, and touch both of those. Yeah. yeah. Well, I thought you were going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> this is a 144 volts DC, so that will give you a little bit of a shock, but everyone says uh, these things are incredibly safe and there's nothing to really worry about here. This, uh, just don't touch those two at the same time. This is the end. Oh. They get you, right? I don't even know what I'm talking about. I just turned the breaker off, so they're disconnected. Like, <laughs> huh. there's there's like nothing that can hurt you as long as you're careful and don't go touching like both the, sides. It's like an arm shield. Arm it. Oh, it really fingernail sad. dexterity for that. Nice. There it was. There it was. Okay, so this might have been worked on. No, it wasn't. Okay, so we will have to pop a couple of zip ties loose there, pop that loose, get everything out of the way so we, this can come with us and then the battery can come out. We also have to pull this ground right here. So we'll start with the negative positive ground. She's off. Oh, doing this the old fashioned way here. Oh wow, that is tight. <laughs> that is incredibly tight. <sighs> yeah, those might be the temp sensors. <laughs> Struggle bus. Yeah. All right, the battery's moving. Battery in transit. And we've got the battery out. So now we can start disassembling things. We're gonna take out uh, that, 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 and that, 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 those six tins that hold on the plastic. And the ones that make contact with the batteries are that one, that one, whoa, I said that one already. And those three right there. So that should get that off. Josh is popping off the insulation. So you have to just kind of work it off, it's foam insulation. Oh man, every one of these does bolt in. I thought they just sat on there like a cap, like the Gen 2s, but this is gonna be a, an exciting event. All right, we're gonna flip the breaker on here. Maybe this won't work because the contactor's not pulled in, but we have zero volts DC and you go to this one? 16 volts. Here comes the actual plastic piece, the end cap. While we're in here real quick, try to measure those. No. I'd say that's got some resistance, but checks out. Yeah, they both check out, I think. They're not open circuits. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as soon as you get pressure on it, it goes good. So that's good news. And there we have our uh, control end cap, all that good stuff, and Current sensors, These, that's a big amp meter right there. Kind of cool. Huh, I wonder if that, I guess that's the contactor it looks like. Some weird spacers. So those spacers are what actually make contact with the plate. Mm -hmm. So those all have to go back exactly, but we can pull them out so we don't lose them. Go NASCAR style? 100%. Oh, Cool. All right, I think we can pull this end plate now. Ooh, it's folding all those ears up. Yeah, you gotta fold every one of them back down when you're done. Oh man. That's just how it do. That's how the Honda do. 
Oh, look at that. That cell is opening up. That one doesn't look great. Okay, do this all over again? Yep, now we start over. I don't know why somebody even tried using a Phillips when you could clearly do this with an impact in seconds. All right, back to the tin. Pull the batteries. In between the legs. There you go. I think you get penalized in NASCAR for losing a lug nut. You Just probably saying. do. Probably. Who knows though, you know. Are you using your finger? I was like, I'll do something sharp and metallic. Just jam it in there. <laughs> okay, we got another plate off. Now, if we want to sell, we should be able to just ask for it, other than these ones that have temp sensors on them. Is that just a sleeve that they slide into? Or is that built into the cell? Uh, here, this one's the one, that, the first one I think is bad and you just push them out like that. I guess we could measure it. Better measure all these guys. So. We'll the, measure them while they're in there to see if they're even needing to get pulled out. Getting to be smart. Mm -hmm. I guess I have to know which direction that goes and I already pulled it out like an idiot. Did I pull it out like that, right? Yeah, because this ear's not bent and the other one's probably bent flat. Close to flat. Yeah. Cool. Oh, yeah. They do have to go in the exact same direction. So we'll change this to 20 volts now. And let's see, we have negative one six. In this direction we have positive one six. One six. So the square is positive and the hex is negative on each set of cells. I really wish this was a second gen hybrid Civic because it's so much easier to keep track of this, so much easier to work on. This thing comes apart easier, man. But we're getting it done. Time to grab our cell stash out of the back here. Hopefully we'll get enough of these things. Wow, those are heavy. So we measured all the cells and wrote the voltages on all of them. You can see this one's like 0 0.7, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, uh, 0 0.1. Those ones are really trash and all these ones seem pretty cool. At three, two, two, twos. Uh, they've all been sitting forever. This one was a 1.6. We're gonna try to charge this thing with the RC car charger here and see if we can bring them back to life a little bit. Try to charge them up to the 7.2 volts per stick that we're expecting. Unfortunately, they're all looking very dead uh, because these have been sitting forever. These have been sitting forever. The car has been sitting forever. Really, really bad for something like this. Hopefully we can recover some of it. Well, this seems to be charging insanely fast. <laughs> Cranking through that voltage there. Got the meter on the meter port. And we do know this thing's trying to put out 15 volts but it's supposed to be the right charger for this and it says it'll do nickel metal hydride one through eight cells. We only have six cells, so it should be the setup. Wow, she's bright. 8.2, 8.1, like a rock. It's holding. Yeah, it's not terrible, honestly. It's holding it. Yeah. I pulled it down. Oh, it's actually even climbing a little bit. Well, that one might be okay. They had 1.6. 1.6 originally. 1.6 isn't too bad. Okay, so this one can come out. Replace, replace it with this one? Uh, let's see if we have any more oranges, because the oranges seem to be amazing. Let's see what orange measures here. 3.3. That's not bad at all. I meant 6 point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I think all the oranges are like excellent, much newer cells. Okay. Also, when you do this, take pictures of both sides and do not mix them up because if you're wrong, it will not go back together. So uh, this is this end and it is square on this side. And that's all you gotta do. Slide these things in here. Boom. The temp sensor ones are a lot more fun because I think if we don't have any with temp sensors, we're gonna have to take a razor, cut the tape, pull the sensor off and then tape up a new little sleeve and then put it back together. And also almost every battery with a temp sensor is trash because they're the ones that were never changed. Uh, they definitely didn't want to do that kind of work whoever took this apart last and that was the wrong choice. It made this much worse. I pulled out all three cells with the temp sensors. As I said, they were the worst. You can see that one had 0.3, that one had 0.9 and this one, somebody had actually gone through the trouble to change. Didn't see that until it came out and it has 1.6. So that one was sort of holding those ones, very, very bad. Grabbed a razor blade, cut a couple of these guys open so you can see the uh, thermocouple or thermistor that's hiding in there. Uh, very simple, 
And I'm not sure why these guys cut all the way down and then put it on the bare metal. It clearly doesn't need that from the factory. The thermocouple goes on top of the uh, cell insulation there. As you can see, we now have a very fat cat. All the old cells all packed up and we are charging these cells two at a time with this charger that has dual outputs and we're just moving through them and uh, the polarity is always flipped. So basically, as soon as this thing beeps to indicate that it's done charging, we flip the wires on both sides and then move to the next set and we're just kind of going through the pack. This is gonna take a little while. It honestly might take all night. I don't know if we're gonna get this done as quickly as I thought, just because I wanna bring all the cells back up to kind of a ready or a nominal voltage. So when it goes in the car, the pack's at 144 or 150 volts, somewhere in that range. And uh, hopefully it indicates it has a good battery then. Obviously, bolting it back together, exactly what we did in reverse. Not that big of a deal, very tedious though. All right, we got the pack back together. We threw all the bolts back in it and the hundreds of bolts to hold the Gen 1 together. And now we're gonna come over here to where the amp clamp is, the current sensor, 157 volts. 156.9, 157 flat. Yeah, that ought to make this thing live again. So shut the meter off, put this thing back in the car. I'm not looking forward to this because my back still hurts from yesterday because you can only lift it with your back like you can't get your legs under it's so so awkward this is my baby now <laughs> these go here so go ahead and do the easy ones get them out of the way okay this one's a little tricky Got that. These two are our main power lugs, so we'll do the positive. Drop it, short the thing out, blow us up. I made battery reinstalled, everything's hooked up, all the clips are in, power. No explosion. No explosion. <laughs> Not even smoke. Let's see if, uh, see if the car says something. We don't have a battery charge state, which is a bad deal, I think. Taking the gauge cluster out of the car so I can get the tape off the IMA light because I want to know if the IMA is actually working. Unlike the last person who worked on this. And we're gonna fix it? Yeah. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> Might even clear that oil change light that's popping up. Okay, so now it looks like pop this, pop this, more tabs on the bottom. I think we're getting close. This should really come apart and get cleaned with like Novus or something so that it's better. Polish out the plastic. Okay, we made it into the gauges. There's two pieces of electrical tape on here. Double layered, huh? Double layered to ensure no light penetration. Big old light that says IMA on there. <laughs> Let's see if I can get some of the adhesive residue off. You wanna check the bulb on the check engine light? Are there bulbs? You know what? All LEDs. It is LED. Why isn't the check engine light on? Maybe they like opened it all the way up and cut the traces on the circuit board. <laughs> I guess you can pop it open. And you look sure it. can. Yeah, this is a uh, Honda factory tool. It yeah. does say Honda right on it. <laughs> it ships with the car. Oh, okay. <laughs> Got the back off. I don't see any like glaring issues here. Right here. This light. I don't see any cut traces. Maybe O2 sensor codes just aren't that important to the car. Uh, Hyundai does that stuff. Hyundai's won't set a check engine light until the world's ending. Dang, I thought we were gonna find something. I did too. For sure. All right, I'm putting the cluster back in. Just got those uh, Phillips screws to hold the cluster itself in. Now we just need to put the surround in. Josh went ahead and pulled the battery. Let's see if there's any change. We can definitely hear the IMA contactor pulling in when this thing starts. So there's the click. Oops, put that away. Still have an IMA light. Runs really well. No charge. Better go get the code clearing device and see what we can do. We're still scanning here, but things are looking better already. Only eight faults from the engine this time. I'm gonna clear all the codes once we get them all back here and uh, see what all we're getting out of the IMA. We cleared the codes. It does seem like maybe there is a bad temp sensor in the pack because the fan came right back on. So let's start this up and see if there's anything better here. Only the IMA light and maintenance required. Time to rescan all these modules. 
Now we're looking at the live data from the IMA. You can see all three phases and they're all negative two. State of charge is 19.9%, .9%, which seems terrible for how much charging we did on the pack. And the battery, main battery voltage, I guess, is 154 volts. So that is good news. And these TIM sensors look good, except for one. One is either like showing that it's extremely hot or broken. I do agree that one may actually have a problem. It'd be super weird if that one's having a problem based on the fact that uh, it's the one that had never been opened before. And I was careful taking it out and we've always had that code. So very, very weird. Huge shout out to Johnny at German Motor Works for letting me steal all of his data again to work on the Civic. We uh, printed off the troubleshooting guides for everything to do with the IMA because it's actually pretty complex. Well, I've read through most of the troubleshooting guides on this and it appears uh, this may be the car to fire the parts cannon at, if, if at all. Um, it's either very, very, very badly broken or uh, it's something really simple. So of course, as you saw, we've completely rebuilt the battery. The battery is working as intended and we eliminated one code. The charging code is gone, but it still says there's a bad battery. It says the thing needs reflashed. I have no way to reflash that. I'm sure it's a dealer only thing. A lot of the troubleshooting, almost all of Honda's troubleshooting says replace MCM with a known good one. So uh, obviously I don't have any extras of those, but it says you're supposed to have one on hand to troubleshoot it. Um, it says like almost all of Honda's guides say, you know, replace, swap with known good, replace, swap with known good. And of course we don't have any known good parts, but I'm gonna pull the cover off the magical section here, the actual inverter. And there's also a bunch of sensors that we need to uh, disconnect wires from the MCM to uh, see what their inputs look like. And if that sensor B is actually bad, which I've heard that it's probably not bad, it's probably a wiring issue, um, you have to basically pull the transmission out of the car, which is way too much work for a simple flip. Uh, honestly, you can just unplug that connector to it there and it'll start ignoring the IMA battery and drive it around like a Civic. So maybe that's the move to fix this car. With the bottom cover off, we can see the three phases coming from the motor up front. That's pretty cool. Uh, that's supply and when it's in region, uh, the return. Those look like they might be current sensors or something like that. Uh, you can see that the leads themselves go through those. So. Nice, compact, cool current sensor, some big capacitors it looks like, and there's the battery connections itself. Everyone said that it was wiring issues whenever they were troubleshooting this when I read everything on the forums. So I don't think any of this has ever been a part or, and it doesn't seem like it's failing either. So the car is on, I'm not getting any power out of the battery. Obviously uh, it's not calling for it because it thinks the battery is having issues. I'm gonna go ahead and cycle the ignition and see if it pops on for just a moment there. Pulled the number nine fuse and that should reset the IMA. So let's see. Heard the contactors, didn't see a blip on the meter. Right, we are scanning this thing again. I've got the snubber module unhooked there and I've been through pages and pages and pages of continuity checks and ohming out almost every wire in here. It all checks good. So this number is like the last thing on the list. And I honestly doubt it's what fixes this. It connects between the uh, capacitor array right there. We'll see what the scanner comes back with, but it actually has more codes now that that's unhooked. So uh, things could be worse. Strangely, the codes that I was in troubleshooting, they went away. And the ones that I have been, battery temp sensor one, signal circuit high input, that one's there, and bypass contactor problem is there, even though that's the one we were trying to fix with the snubber removal. I guess I will clear the codes and try this again. So we're gonna go back a page, quick erase. Well, that is it for the 2004 Honda Civic Hybrid for a while. We're gonna table this. I went through every little bit of that factory troubleshooting and got nowhere. Everything checked good, and every single one of those things that checked good underneath it said, replace battery module, replace battery module. <laughs> I'm sure the battery cells themselves are good. Obviously, as you can see in the live data from the IMA, they were testing right where we were seeing them on the bench, 154 volts right now, it's charged. 20% state of charge and the car is running great. But for some reason, we just can't get it to supply power from the IMA battery to the car. It will not pull in the main contactor and it's saying there's an issue with the bypass contactor. So that kind of all points to that module on the side of the thing. Uh, that's where the bypass contactor and the main are. If I test across the positive and negative leads coming out of the battery, there's never any power because there's nothing pulling in the contactor. So we did what the forums recommended, which is replace the 31 pin connector on the uh, motor controller. It's the biggest connector on there and it's called connector A. 
if you just unplug it, there's no more IMA. And the motor itself kind of turns into an alternator. It uses the DC to DC and it charges the 12 volt battery. So suddenly you have a drivable car. So I went ahead and I left the breaker off on the battery, just killed that, unplugged the connector, started the car. Suddenly it has power. The electric power steering works, it drives right. Anyway, we're gonna pull this out of here. It's a driver for now and uh, you know what? If it comes down to parts availability, which it kind of looks like that's what it's coming down to, uh, most of these parts are gone. They only come from salvage yards at this point. Maybe we'll just sell the car as a project. So that is it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to head on over to shop watchjrgo.com where you can get cool shirts like this. And please, like, share, subscribe, do whatever you want to do, and I will talk to you next time. Also, the 12 volt battery is bad too, which could contribute to more of our issues. Um, of course, on the jump pack, the thing was working really well but then we put it on the charger and saw like a crazy current draw and the charger leads were so hot we could barely grab onto them. So it's gonna get a new 12 volt battery tomorrow no matter what and uh, we'll, we'll keep playing with this thing. But for now, let's get back on the Porsche. It's funny, this car drives better than it ever did with the IMA on it. I've got power steering, I've got everything <laughs> just by unplugging the IMA. Technically we fixed it because it drives perfectly and you can go anywhere. I have heard that uh, you're not supposed to let it idle for long periods because uh, it can't charge the battery at very low RPMs. The 12 volt battery that is, but yeah. All the power's there, power steering's there. Solid car. It even accelerates. That's what's really cool. I can do the speed limit.